This project is about using new technologies to expand inclusion. Our goal was how can we bring the people who are most affected by peace agreements into the conversation. We are reaching people who are not normally invited to formal peacemaking processes. When we have more inclusive peace processes, the chances that they last longer is higher. Especially women and youth, their representation significantly increases the sustainability of a peace agreement. How does it work? It's basically an online conversation of the United Nations with the individuals. They go to a simple website where they engage in a chat. They work in different languages. They work in different dialects. The dialogue is as if you are in a one-on-one -on -one conversation with up to a thousand people. And a single moderator is holding questions, ranking questions, open-ended questions. Also, people respond to each other's answers. All of this is done anonymously. We can listen to the unwanted truth. In the background, the AI-assisted algorithms understand like responses and cluster them. You can segment according to gender, different political affiliation or location. It's helping us rank and understand the most important or most agreed upon responses. Go into tremendous detail has tremendous value because it can inform the future direction that a process might take in a given conflict context. It expands the scope for potential solutions. Yemen was the first time that digital dialogues were applied in a live peace negotiation process. It is a conflict that has gone on for several years. You have a humanitarian catastrophe, a pandemic. We were able to invite hundreds of women participants to this conversation. They were able to freely express their hopes and their, their fears for the future of their country. In Libya, we talked to 5,000 members of the Libyan public. The Libyan dialogues address issues such as the civil war, the ceasefire, economic issues, as well as the future elections. We started working very closely with the UN mission on the ground in order to support its work. That information was then used to guide what direction we took when the next round of negotiations happened. This was invaluable to the leadership of the UN mission. This was really an opportunity to bring in voices as reference points for the ongoing political negotiations. We talk about Marwa also, an activist in Iraq that joined the first ever digital dialogue in Iraq. There are, of course, limits to this technology. The results are just one reference point. Technology is not a means to itself. Is this linked to action? Technology is just a tool. What we're after in our work is greater inclusivity. Digital approaches to dialogue are the future. In a few years from now, we will be able to have conversations with a million people. This tool will be used by colleagues around the world. Imagine we can easily switch from one language to the others. Driving adoption of these technologies amongst these diverse populations will help us ultimately revitalize democracies and reduce conflict around the world. Another point that would be beautiful to have is to have a more immersive experience. What if, in 10 years from now, you put on a VR headset and you're in that conversation? We're really excited to see where we go. New technologies allow us to listen to everybody who wants to be listened to. We are just at the beginning of harvesting the possibilities of these technologies. Moving forward, it is vital that we find ways to bring in others into the conversation.